Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this newsletter of October 28. As we all know, the last two years have been quite an extraordinary time for the teenagers at St Joseph's. In the last couple of months, we've moved towards a living with COVID setting, which promises a return to something like the pre-COVID world. I've been thinking that as we find opportunities in between enjoying reinstated freedoms to reflect on the last two years, I wonder exactly what we'll discover. And I hope that one of the things that we will come to discover and recognise is the capacity that each of our young men have to be generous and caring towards others. Lord knows they've had enough practice. And perhaps they'll come to understand that while they are young and healthy and vaccinated and resilient, it's important that they sanitise and socially distance and wear a mask, not for themselves, but to help care for and protect others more vulnerable. And certainly an enhanced recognition of our obligation to others can only be a good thing. And of course, it is part of our story. In scripture, the first question that the creator God asks of a young man is in chapter four of Genesis, which tells the story of the brothers Cain and Abel. God asks Cain, where is your brother? And Cain, having killed his brother in a jealous rage, famously replies, am I my brother's keeper? And the rest of the story makes it quite clear that the emphatic answer from God is yes, we are our brother's keepers and responsibility and care for other human beings is really the purpose of our creation. Perhaps our reflection of the last two years will help remind us that really we've shown ourselves to be pretty good at it. For well over two decades now, the St. Joseph staff have gathered annually to celebrate what has become known as the Staff Gratitude Dinner. From humble beginnings in the old staff room to larger on-site and off-site venues, it's usually commenced with mass or liturgy, followed by a meal and some brief speeches celebrating all that's great about working at St. Joseph's. Over the years, the function has been themed occasionally. I can certainly recall riding a camel across a Frazier Oval from mass to dinner one year. It's been a lunch, it's been a dinner, and last year, for the first time, it became an online gathering out of necessity. In recent years, this gathering has also come to include the presentation of service awards for long-serving staff, the Professor Frank Larkins Award for Teaching Excellence, and the Damien Moynihan Award for Outstanding Service by Educational Support Staff. After frequent rescheduling this year, the events being held tonight, Thursday, October 27, sadly, once again, it's online. The staff have worked really hard to support students throughout the year, and tonight will be an opportunity to pause and reflect on a job well done. My opening remarks at this gathering are as follows. Working with young people is the greatest job in the world. We occupy the privileged position of being welcomed into the lives of our students as teachers and support staff, where we have the opportunity to become mentors and role models. This is the greatest blessing we could ever experience in our lives. But for all that we take from the profession, there is a cost. It's personally draining and never more so than in the last two years. While the rewards of the job are magnificent, the cost to us is significant, but we continue to give of ourselves because we know how much our work means to the young people whose lives we're privileged to be part of. Tonight's a wonderful opportunity to celebrate who we are and what we do and acknowledge some of the exemplars amongst us who provide us with models of how we might do what we do even better and to acknowledge some of those who've served St Joseph's with distinction for many years. And above all else, tonight is about saying thank you to everybody on behalf of the 1,850 boys we teach and care for every day. I hope you enjoy this evening and look forward to the time when we can be together to celebrate in person. And finally, 
the end of 13 years of schooling for our year 12s in recent weeks has no doubt caused much reflection in families. I recently came across this article in the Sunday Age. The author, Michael McGurr, was a teacher in an EREA school for many years and is a well-known author. I'd like to share his reflections on the graduation of a son with you. The piece is titled, My Son's Final Day of Schooling is a Turning Point in Both Our Lives. He writes, I've been looking at a photo of my son on his first day at school. He looks awkward in a uniform, a plain polo shirt with a sensible sun hat. He'd spent his life to that point in exuberant fancy dress. There are photos in this album as well, a pirate, a goat herd, a magician, a spy, a musketeer, a clown. Now he looks worried. His shorts are propped up to his belly button and he's trying to hold it together. My son has held it together for 13 years. Friday was his last day of school. And in that time, I've seen him grow in strength and dignity as he's weathered one storm after another. He's one of the most courageous people I've ever met and one of the most honest. Maybe I say that because I've seen the friendlessness that comes from being a bit different in a tightly scripted environment. He has been both isolated and bullied. A beautiful letter of encouragement from the former principal has been pinned to his wall for years. I've realized how similar we are. Nobody has taught me as much about living with anxiety, about picking myself up and trying again. My son has learned to laugh at those who are born to rule. We don't talk much about God because I know there's a point at which mum and dad have to shut up and just let God do the talking for God's self. I wonder now if he might have felt the hunger for God more authentically in a school that was not overtly religious. I'm concerned that he's experienced belief as part of a uniform. And yet I also know there is so much tenderness and kindness beneath his unvarnished exterior that his life will be open and loving searching for a deeper explanation of the mystery of his being. My own father died a few weeks before my final day at school. I'm still coming to terms with that experience. And again, sharing these days with my son is helping to heal injuries I'd almost forgotten. For this, I give thanks. My son and I are normally the first two awake in the house. His mother, brother and sister will be still asleep as he systematically prepares his coffee. I'll be on the couch at the other end of the room for this is my quiet time. Since he was born, I've begun every day with the words of Psalm 63. God, you are my God. For you, I long like a dry, weary land without water. My son has been a big part of God's response. Stay well, everybody, and God bless.